Hey, welcome to Church for Business People. My name is Moridi Wanjao, also known as Pastor M, and I'm so glad you're here with us tonight. Uh, hey, you know the drill. Wherever you're watching from, just come on, go on the comment section there. Tell us where you're watching from, what city, what estate, what part of the world. It's so, so good to have you here with us. My goodness, we've been going already uh, for quite a while. This is June. We're, we're, we're in a new series. We're talking about uh, Kingdom Business Basics. That's what we're going to be covering and what we're continuing to do this month. And as we start, do me a favor. Uh, hit share. If you've got friends who need to be watching this, then uh, let them know that we've started uh, so they're able to watch with us. And also, there's a link at the bottom of this. Uh, there's, a, there's a pinned link to this uh, community uh, broadcast and it's actually a link to for you to join our whatsapp community and our whatsapp community is a fantastic space to be able to interact with our kingdom business people and to figure out how do we grow these kingdom businesses that god has made us responsible for so join our whatsapp community we'd love uh, to stay connected with you so without further ado we want to go into a time where we lift up our god and worship him because in the kingdom there's only one king and we want to raise him up right now so let's get into a time of worship Healing, 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 
this is our prayer that we want to be with you we want to be where you are Lord that's a cry of each and every single one of our hearts Jesus wow thank you so much Kanji for that amazing time of worship I hope you've been as inspired and as, as uplifted as I am we always start by just lifting up our king that's what we do as kingdom business people because we recognize that there's a king he owns we manage uh, he's the true owner of our business and so we must always begin by recognizing that and putting him in his rightful place. Now, if you're, if you're joining us just now, please uh, let us know where you're checking in from. Uh, let us know what part of the world or what, what estate you're checking in from. We'd love that. And also uh, join our WhatsApp community. There's a link below this broadcast. Uh, it's a great space. By the way, this WhatsApp community is a great place where you can ask questions, receive encouragement, contribute even to the content of Church for Business People. Please note, it's not a WhatsApp group, so we're not going to spam you and fill your phone with many messages. It's just going to be custom tailor-made uh, exclusive content for people who are in the business community. So please join if you haven't yet, and we look forward to just growing together. So this month, we're going through Proverbs Challenge Reloaded. Uh, reading through the book of the Proverbs together. Uh, today we're in Proverbs 10, so I hope uh, you're keeping up. And my goodness, I can't wait to see what God is going to do through us as we grow in the Proverbs. Actually, I, I'm going to read, uh, somebody wrote, uh, I've just had such good comments from the people in the business community. Uh, this is uh, one of the people who say, called Rose. She says, I found myself listening to my inner voice more since May when we did round one of the Proverbs. But right now, June is our second round. We're calling it Proverbs Reloaded. And Rose said, I found that when my inner voice, my inner compass is in place, I listen to others better. I hear them better. I empathize with others more. And she says, I was listening yesterday to a LinkedIn session on emotional intelligence. And I kid you not, without making direct reference to the book of Proverbs, all the tips the instructor shared on developing emotional intelligence can be traced to this book. So hey, if you're not reading through the book of Proverbs, thank you so much Rose, by the way, but if you're not reading through the book of Proverbs, let me just tell you, you're missing out. We are gaining Proverbs, we're gaining wisdom for our businesses. That's what we're doing as we walk through the Proverbs Challenge Reloaded. So I wanna just uh, dig deeper. We're going, we're going into this kingdom business idea. This is what we're talking about in June. Uh, who is it for? What, 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 how do we run a kingdom business? And before we start, before we go do too deep, I want to go into part two of an interview we did last week. We did part one with Frida Winger, uh, founder of Profit Passion, and she is passionate about helping other people discover their passion. So here's part two. All right. And uh, hey, this is part two of our interview. Uh, I'm talking, uh, if you're here last week, you remember we're talking with Frida Winger, who is the founder of uh, Profit Passion Limited, a learning and development company. And she is also uh, uh, somebody who is running, uh, she runs this amazing thing, or, or rather she has a team that runs this amazing thing called the Founders Profit Academy, where they train entrepreneurs to discover their passion and to make profit out of their passion. Did you know that you can turn your passion into profit? That's what this is about, isn't it, Frida? That's so, right. Great, great to have you here again. Uh, hey, we, today, we, right now, we want to just dig a bit deeper into what we started talking about uh, last week. Uh, okay. We're talking about why is it so, and I, I really want to say, why is it so important that you go with your passion? I mean, somebody is here thinking, and you know how Kenyans we think, it's like, let me look for the business that has money. Uh, which business has money? Let me go into the business that has money. Then, then one day when I've got the money, yeah. and I think a lot of people think this, uh, a lot of our younger people think this, and a lot of our older people. Let me find the money first, and then passion yes. will follow. So just speak into that, because I mean, it sounds logical. It's like, I don't have the, I can't afford my passion right now. Let me first pay yeah. the bills. <laughs> then when I can pay the That's bills, right. I'll go for passion, yeah. I like that. Let me first pay the bills. Yeah. That alone is what, you know, just spoils the whole trajectory because your, our mindset is what holds us back. And we tend to think we have to work to pay bills, but we are here for a bigger purpose. I tell people you're too brilliant to work to just pay bills. All right. So the key thing here, so 
when when you start with your passion and the reason you start with your passion is almost like that is all you have that's why we call it a skin test we say go under your skin and you start and the bible tells us that wisdom is the principal thing so it's never money if yeah. you have the wisdom the money will follow and you may start a business today because that is where the money is insurance companies are struggling now but as long as people are people are alive there'll always be problems to solve so i think mm. the first place to look at is what is going on around at any time whether it is covid or in any season there are problems to solve and in every season that people are alive and you are alive you and i are alive there's a solution here you are solving a problem for church business you know creating church for business people business people need hope we have maguno but you 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 look at what do business people need right now you started church for business people so in every situation there are opportunities that will align with what you are called to do with will wow. align with your passion so, so first look around yeah so what you're saying is if you if you follow money that thing will not always be in it fashion it would dry up it would dry up yeah. it's not the best way to go because you see a proven methodology is look at what other problems can the environment and then what do you have that can fix what you see so we need to stop chasing we need to stop chasing money and start chasing problems i love it start in fact maybe the company should be called Pro- <laughs> profit from problems i think <laughs> but that is the way because yeah even if you look in the kingdom The Bible says that when Moses was being sent, God said that I have heard the sigh of my people and I have come down to send. So somewhere somebody is praying somewhere, they have a problem and God is calling you the business owner to go fix it. Like God has called you now to help us <laughs> church for business people, all right? Mm. So we need to pay attention what are the problems and then what can I do that can meet some of the needs that are, are around me? because that way when you're working from your passion you can never get stuck because that is the fuel that is your purpose you'll always it's what makes you alive again or right? because it is your service to humanity it is why you are here all right yeah. so when like when i was sick when i was sick what brought me back to life i god asked me what were you doing the last time and i said i was speaking he said so what's stopping you from speaking you can still speak so I started doing Facebook at that year and I did the first one called Quit the Vibing Start Thriving and in that I did a 21 day challenge in less than 10 days I had put out a, a poster that I made myself and put it on Facebook and I got 1500 people coming into the challenge and that changed their lives their testimonies that group still exists today so looking around to see what is going on and how can what do you know to do where can you start start the money will follow it has oh. never failed <laughs> i love it i love it so let me ask a question then there's somebody who is thinking the thing that is my area of passion i can't afford it so maybe a, and, and the typical one obviously is this guy wants to be a pilot his parents can't afford pilot in school uh he you know so it's it's like i i really am passionate about this i want to be a musician but i can't afford a recording contract right now so let me hustle mm-hmm. so how do you speak to somebody like that i mean what do, do i just wait until the day i can afford it or is there some things i should start doing <laughs> there's no waiting you die waiting <laughs> you die waiting everybody <laughs> has a place yeah everybody has a place to start I, something like being a pilot what i'll tell the person who wants to be a pilot what are the pilot schools that exist can you volunteer in one can you get a relationship inside one start all right but i being a pilot is just one thing they can do the my other things around that being being a pilot and what are the things that you can do that can solve immediate problem and that as you solve immediate problem start generating some money the other thing is when we start generating money we don't know how to manage finances so we If I know I want to be a pilot as I start generating the finance then I need to be putting some aside towards that dream you see so there's always a place to start start with what is under your skin provide that solution if it's bigger than if the money coming in is not enough for the bigger dream save towards it and believe God for people along the way because when you have a vision the provision will come 
and the provision oh. is the people and the people will you can trade time and talent with people so it's not always an investor i've discovered and there are three kinds of investors the people who will invest their time into your company the people who will invest their talent that if you cannot find the money investing investor, find other people who can trade their time and talent. Right now, Passion Profit, I can safely say I'm only the founder because the other consultants I work with, they're trading their time and talent and they're sitting in exactly their area of passion. So everybody is happy. Wow. I like I like that. Huh? So 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 I and, and I think maybe it even affects how we start parenting differently because I'm thinking we we grew up wanting a profession as opposed to being taught to look for a problem you know so shifting yeah. from teaching yes. look like for that. a profession start looking for a problem what problem why do you want to be a pilot what so what problem do you want to solve for people because that yeah. problem is much bigger than the profession and the profession will actually become outdated as we're seeing professions yes. being outdated professions are getting outdated but problems right? will I always know. be there the problems are even increasing so i, I really like, like that i love it so what Problems about some will always be there. Yeah, what, what about this person then who is um they're established, I've already I've done my degrees, I've paid for my trainings, I'm so far ahead in this career, but it's not my passion, it kills me. Uh, I remember just meeting a guy who's a, a, a leading engineer who told me that he is he hates, hates, hates engineering. But he's a, he's actually a very prominent engineer in our in our society today. Uh, but he's in a place where he studied it because that's what his parents asked him to study and he wishes he didn't. Uh, but he's making money from it. So what about that person who's, I mean, I'm stuck now because I've, yeah. I've climbed up the ladder too far to come back down. What do you tell a person? <laughs> On the wrong wall. <laughs> On the wrong wall, exactly. The person, um, again, I'll sound like a stuck record. We'll go under his skin. I. You see, many times we find that somebody is very clear about what they don't want. So we, we come in to help you figure out what can you do instead. Because every time you don't, when you know very clearly what you don't want, that is number one. Number two, what should you do instead is where people get stuck because they, they get very focused and, you know, drawn by what they don't want. But when we come in as your coach, as your mentor, we help you think through. We go under your skin to help you think through. You hate engineering. If you didn't have to do engineering, yeah. what would you be doing? What would it look like? Because yeah. we get so engrossed with what is not working. We don't even lift up our head to dare think what else can work. But when we do that, we start seeing things that are uh, things that we need to do. And this whole thing is a process. And I love the Bible. I always say that because the word of God tells us that his word is a lamp unto our feet. Yeah. So when you start, more light comes, more light comes. And you know, it gets brighter and brighter. Our path is like the shining light that shines brighter and brighter. So the key thing is to start, get the wisdom. And the wisdom is, I hate this. What would I prefer? Asking ourselves those questions. When you hate something, that is some, your, your emotions guiding you, that you're on the wrong track. God did not create us to, you know, to suffer and struggle and do things we don't like. That's not the kind of God we serve. He has said very clearly that Jesus Christ died so that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Have you wow. seen somebody in abundance hating their abundance? <laughs> so there's a problem. And I always say, if you're not having fun, stop and fix it. Stop and fix it is, what would I rather be doing? Dare to think and ask yourself that question. What would I rather be doing? Who will it help if I do if I did this or I did the other? Really coming out of ourselves and beginning to look around who might need something I know to do. And don't undermine it without undermining it and feeling, oh, it is just this. Will this really bring a lot of money? And the reason we think like that is because we are thinking of our bills or our debt. But we need to start thinking of how can I put this into a system that can generate reliable revenue, not just now, but in times to come. It's a process. Start the journey. Wow. So start the journey. Hey, uh, one of the things I noticed about you, and I think it's very obvious as we've done this interview, is you quote scripture a lot. I mean, which is amazing because you're an entrepreneur, but you might as well be a pastor. You really, uh, you know the Bible. But you said something as we were doing the interview that really struck me because you really talked about the fact that you love the fact that you're a Christian in business. Um, and, and, you know, this is kingdom business we're talking about. So, so why is it for you? Why have you enjoyed being a kingdom entrepreneur? 
I've enjoyed being a kingdom entrepreneur, especially in recent years beyond the past. Um, I've done a study on new age. And in new age, I realized that people focus on the universe and they get there just focusing on the universe and they believe their life is happening. So, and, that, and it bothered me because I focus on God and the word that they use about the universe is scripture, all right? Because law of attraction is faith. Faith is believing in is the evidence of things hoped for, the things not seen. And that's what the law of attraction says. So Christians, we are so engrossed. Oh, that is new age. All right, let's go back to the old age, the Bible. What does the Bible say? The Bible says that faith is the, thing, uh, the evidence of things believed for the things not seen. Are we believing God? We always want to see things before we believe. No, I love the Bible because anything I see in the Bible is a seed that I saw and watering it with the word, I see it. I ask God for clients. I ask God for my daily needs. And you see, God, it's good to have a lot of money, but God will make, God has promised your daily needs. All right. So first believe him for that and let that ripple, you know, be faithful in that and it will ripple into more. Definitely. I believe God because he has said he'll supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. When I don't have clients, I don't back people who owe me money. I go back to the word. When I think about that need, I say this need is met by divine order because God has said all you'll supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. When COVID broke out, I was in Mombasa and the lockdown was announced when I was in Mombasa to do wow. an event on Monday. All right. I didn't start wailing. I said, this thing is going to work out for my good because that's what the Bible says. And in the morning when I woke up, the Holy Spirit told me, don't cancel the event. Tell them the event because it was a training that we'll do the training on Zoom. And we did the training on Zoom and we got more people. So I told them, we are just postponing for one week, but we are not, we are rescheduling. We are not canceling. I'm going back to Nairobi. You need to get, to make sure you have a laptop, you have Wi-Fi, and we're going to do it, we're going to do it on Zoom. And we did it on Zoom. So we wow. didn't stop because, you know, lockdown. It's really just being ready, but also listening to God. and. I know sometimes religion has made listening to God like, you know, you have to be holy and this and the other. God is a faithful God. He has said, come boldly to the throne and receive yeah. grace and mercy in your time of need. If God could talk to Jacob, who had swindled his brother, God can talk to anybody listening now who calls it. upon him. I love it. <laughs> that is, I love you know, it. So he's always there available. The, Business is complex, Pastor M. Sometimes you're like, I love it. Well, you can read all the books you have read, but the Holy yeah. Spirit will give you an inspiration. Take action on that inspiration. It is our game changer. Our it's competitive changer. advantage as business people who know the law is the Holy Spirit. He will show us things that no ear has heard, no eye has seen. If you're not in relationship with him, we are doomed. Thank God for the people who believe in the universe. I choose God. <laughs> it's a stronger anchor. I believe the word. It has helped people since ages past. So make a choice. Everybody has an anchor. Mine is Jesus. <laughs> wow. I love that. Thank you so much. And we're talking about kingdom business this month. And so I love, love, love that. And that, that is partially because my, what I really sense, Frida, is God wants to see a uh, a, a multitude, a, a viral revolution of kingdom entrepreneurs, uh, people who are actually business pastors. <laughs> you know, they they yes. they love the Lord, like they pastors, <laughs> but they're they're part. They're, they're not serving God in a pulpit. They're serving God in their office, and That's they're advancing right. God's kingdom through their business. And so we thank God for partial profit. We thank God for what you're doing. Uh, in training entrepreneurs. Again, okay. uh, you have a course that people can take. There might be people here who are interested and they'd like to learn more about turning yeah. their passion into profit. Again, just tell us where to get that yeah. from. Fantastic. We have a we have a course for people who want to activate their passion and turn it into profit. We help them figure out what is a viable business idea and they come out of that program with this idea and a business plan. It's open right now and they can go to the website. We partner with SME Founders Association. They deliver, we deliver the program through the association, smefoundersassociation.com. Applications are open now. Awesome. So SME Founders uh, Association. Association. Find that online.com. Uh, just, just type that online, go on. Uh, and, and, and hey, we would love to just have many, many people learning about how to be kingdom entrepreneurs, how to be passionate 
about the things that God has called them to. So thank you so much, Frida. You've been a blessing, thank a real you. blessing to to this community. I know everybody agrees, and just can't thank wait to so have much. you back. Can't wait to have you back at Church for Business People. God bless. Thank you. God bless you, sir. Wow, thank you so much, Frida. And thank you for all the work you do. Thank you for inspiring uh, business people to find their passion and to seek God through that, uh, to, f- to find profit in their passion as well. Uh, next week, we're going to continue just talking with different guests. Uh, my hope is just to bring you entrepreneurs whose stories will inspire you to follow your own God-given kingdom journey and who will also have skills that they can bring to our community. Now, last week, We began the nature of the kingdom business. That's what our topic is. This is part two of that. And if you remember, those of you who watched last week, we talked about our anatomy. That as kingdom entrepreneurs, we are created in God's image to represent his divine nature. That's who we are. As I'm walking into my business, I'm not just a hustler. I am a son of God. I'm there to represent his interest. And that leads to the assignment that I've been put on earth to extend God's nature and influence. That's what the purpose of my business is, to extend when we pray, may your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's what my business does. It brings God's justice. It brings God's solutions to people who need those solutions. And then number three, we talked about our authority. That God has fully delegated authority to us as human beings. And that he will not do anything without our invitation. God doesn't do anything in all of scripture without intervention by a human being. And so that's why we say that when we pray for our business, we're not begging God, we're not reminding him to do something he forgot to do. No, we're opening the door. We're actually, we're using the authority he's already given us and inviting him because he wouldn't come without us inviting him to intervene in the matters of the earth. That's what we're doing. We're exercising authority. We're going to be talking a bit later about how to pray for business. But today I want us to speak more about specific things uh, about, about this relevant question, if it's so important for us to exercise authority in our business, if it's so ex- important for us as kingdom business to be distinct because we're ambassadors of heaven, why is this not the reality for most kingdom business people? Why is this not the reality for most Christians in business? Why is it that so many Christians are running hustles that are in shambles? Why is it that we look just like everybody else? Why is it that people use phrases like as poor as a church mouse? Have you ever noticed they never say as poor as a mosque mouth? (laughs) There's just this thing. It it just seems to me that Christians, we don't know our identity. There's something missing when it comes to our running business. And I want to just talk a bit about this today. Uh, the, The reasons why Christian entrepreneurs are not living the life of authority that we were created for. Maybe I want to just share three, uh, three today, just because of time. And the first one is ignorance. You know, we just don't understand our calling, the things we talked about last week. I don't, I don't know about you, but for me, for the longest time, I thought that salvation was fire insurance. You know, it's like I get to know God, so I don't go to hell. I don't burn and go to hell, so I give my, I surrender my life to God. And after that, then what I'm, I'm supposed to do is just be a, be a good person, live on earth, uh, go to church, give my tithe, uh, serve some, some ministry, and then do my business and wait to go to heaven. Uh, because this world is not my home. I mean, that's, that's kind of the thinking uh, that has been forced, even passed on sometimes by church. Uh, but you know, the interesting thing is, it's such a narrow view of the gospel. We saw this last week, that Jesus did not save us so that we can wait for heaven, that Jesus came to help us to rule the earth, which is our destiny. This is what we are called for. So, I mean, we need to understand who we are because when we don't understand that we can't live out the life of privilege that God created us to live in our business. We can't run it the way we are supposed to. Ignorance will keep us from that. There's a great story a friend told me, and this story was kind of humorous if it wasn't so sad. I mean, he, he wanted his, his, uh, his family to visit uh, him when he was in the States and in the U.S. And so what he did is he bought them, and because he wanted to honor them, he got them business class tickets. Uh, So this old man and woman, uh, business class tickets bought by their children, Uh, they get onto that jet, they fly all the way, they're going through London, so they go through Heathrow Airport. They had a nine-hour layover in Heathrow. Now, these guys, uh, the parents, they sat on these hard uh, seats in the airport for six hours. And they were hungry, they were waiting for the, the, the layover to end so they could get on the plane. 
Finally, the mom looked and she saw the dad was really struggling. The, this old man was not looking so good. So she stopped a, a stewardess, uh, somebody who looked like the official wearing the, the airline uniform and says, look, my, this guy is really struggling. We need a bite to eat. Uh, we're not doing too well. Is there anyone here who can help us? And, and the person, the hostess, looks at the, at the uh, tickets. She says, can I see your tickets? Looks at them and says, oh my God, you're business class passengers. You should be in the lounge. And she takes them to this exclusive uh, lounge in the airport where they have plush leather seats and they, have fin they can eat all the food that they want. I mean, all the varieties of food that they want. And my goodness, they enjoyed themselves, but only for two hours because after that they had to get on the plane. And when they told the story, it was so sad because it's like it was so late when they were realizing the privilege that they were supposed to have been enjoying all that time. They were suffering, not understanding that they had rights and privileges that came out of who they were, the position that they had because of the ticket that they were holding. Now, many Christians, unfortunately, this is how we live. You know, we don't know who we are. And because we don't know who we are, then we don't know how we're supposed to run our business. We don't know how we're supposed to live because we don't even know the privilege and the authority God has given us. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11, written by King Solomon, the same one who wrote the book of Proverbs. He, say, he, he wrote in Ecclesiastes 3, 11, He has set eternity in the hearts of men. Yet they cannot fathom what God has done from the beginning to end. We are eternal beings. God has put eternity in us. We represent heaven when we are there in our business. But many times we cannot fathom it because of ignorance. We don't understand what God has done from the beginning to the end. So that's the first reason. Ignorance. May God deliver us from ignorance. Just put your hand on your head right now and say, God deliver me from ignorance. Number two is rebellion. And this is a serious one. Adam and Eve, right from the beginning, as we looked at last week, they were created to represent God. They had the anatomy of, the, of God. They had the nature of God in them. They had his assignment to rule the earth. They had the authority delegated to them to, to carry out that rule. But instead, what do they do? Genesis chapter 3 tells us they rebelled against God. They, God put a boundary and they deliberately crossed that boundary. They decided to do it their way instead of God's way. And by doing that, you know what they did? They were carrying out a coup against God's authority. And because of that, you know what happens when you carry a coup against God? They lost their privileged position. Everything that they had, that God had given them, went. The enemy, who convinced them, by the way, to try their way instead of going God's way, he ended up taking the authority over, which was what his, his plan all along. This is a big political 48 rules of power move that he just slammed them. And they ended up ceding the authority over the earth to him. So he became the prince of the air and they were left there oppressed. And you know, many times we become like that. We have made this world about ourselves. It's about me. I want to be rich. I want to have more than others. I want to, you know, we bought the lie of the world. Fake it till you make it. Be all you can be. Don't be left out. What if I trust God and then I don't get everything I want? That's a big question people will ask. What if I don't get the fame? What if I don't get the wealth? What if I don't get the success? And the enemy again just colluding with us and saying, look, don't trust God. Do it your way. And so we end up doing it our way. And guess what happens? We lose our authority and the enemy gets in charge of us. You know, it's, it's, it's so important for us to understand that Adam and Eve were so deceived and we don't have to be because Jesus came to restore back the authority that the devil had stolen from us. When he conquered sin by dying, a sin, having lived a sinless life, he took authority back. And that's what we learned last week that he said, all authority in heaven and earth is now mine. It's been given back to me. And now I give it to you as human beings. I'm restoring the authority that you lost, that Adam and Eve lost for you. Now go and represent me. Make disciples of all nations. Go and make other nations, go, go and make the nations conform to my authority to, so that heaven will look like, earth will look like heaven. This is restored authority. And we need to understand that by doing it our way, we lose the opportunity to do it God's way. And God's way is the best way. So here's the other reason why many people don't understand. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 22 says, True enrichment comes from the blessing of the Lord with rest and contentment, knowing it all comes from Him. Let me read that again. Proverbs 10 22, that's our proverb for today. It says, True enrichment comes from the blessing of the Lord with rest and contentment in knowing that it all comes from him. When I try to do it for my, uh, by myself, then I even lose the rest and contentment. I'm there hustling, I'm, I'm struggling, 
and I, I lose out on the fact that true enrichment comes from the blessing of the Lord. There's another proverb that says the blessing of the Lord, it makes rich and he adds no sorrow to it. And so rebellion will not get me there. I need to do, kingdom business is about doing God's thing, God's way. The third reason, so we talked about ignorance, we talked about rebellion. The third reason why many of us are not enjoying our businesses, we're not living out the potential of the business that God has put us in charge of, uh, is fear. Huh. Fear will cause many of us not to experience the life that we're wired for. You know, many of us, we feel, uh, maybe we feel like, you know what? I've, I've seen poverty. I've seen what it does to people. I never want to be, to, to be poor. I'm going to do anything I can to avoid being poor. Some of us, we're, we're living our lives to prove someone else wrong. Maybe somebody spoke some harsh words to us. You'll never amount to much. It was a teacher or a parent or somebody said those words. And so we're living our lives out trying to prove someone else wrong. Running as fast as we can so we can succeed because we're afraid of failure. We're afraid of poverty. We're afraid of people's opinions. We're just afraid. And fear will keep you from experiencing the joy, the abundance in kingdom business that you're created to do. You know, the interesting thing is some of us can be so irrational in our fear that as much as I know I'm a Christian, (laughs) I go to church on Sunday and lift up holy hands, but the rest of the week I'll be cutting all the shortcuts I can. Why? Because even God knows I need to succeed. I must do what I can to succeed. So fear will keep us from living the life of op- the life that God created us from. You know, Proverbs chapter 10, verse 27. Another verse from our chapter for today. By the way, Proverbs is so full of wisdom for us in this season. Proverbs 10, 27 says, Living in the worship and awe of God will bring you many years of contented living. Ah, living in the worship and awe of God will bring you many years of contented living. So how could the wicked ever expect to have a long, happy life? Understanding God's God's agenda helps me not to be panicked, helps me not to run in fear. It helps me understand that he is in charge, that he's the one who put me in this business, that this is his business, that he has an agenda for this business, that the first thing I need to do is align myself with his agenda. Ask God, why did you put me in this sector? What's the big solution you want me to bring here? How do I align it according to your purpose? And then fear goes out of our lives. You see, I believe the greatest tragedy for us as modern day Christians is we've lost our memory of who we are. We've lost our memory of who we're supposed to be. I remember reading about this child who disappeared from home. Uh, and was looked for for a while and wasn't found. And the parents panicked and even gave up on finding the child. And finally, the child was found living on the streets. Uh, It was a long story how they ended up there, but they were living on the streets as a street child. And DNA tested showed that they actually were the child who'd been lost years before. And so this child was brought home and the parents were so overjoyed. They finally had their child back. They put the child in his own room and uh, it was a beautifully done up room and they gave him his toys and they gave him his space and and all the food they could. And it was like, my goodness, we're going to do everything we can to celebrate this child who has come home. The child was very confused. Uh, You could tell they were happy to be with their parents. But it's almost like, I'm not sure there's something going on. They could tell there's a, a, a reluctance somewhere. But after a while, the parents were able to say, my goodness, this kid seems to be finally settling. They decided to feel like maybe he's settling. Until one day, mom is cleaning his room and she looks under his bed. And you know what she found there? She found a bag with all his old clothes, his street clothes, that were hidden in that bag. And she found some scraps of food that he had been hiding in that bag. And you know what she realized? That this boy, in his insecurity, in his fear that he could end up back on the street, He was actually making sure he was protected just in case he was one day kicked out. He was holding on to the scraps of his former life because of fear that he would one day be rejected. And you know, unfortunately, I've come to understand many times as Christians were like that. It's like, I'm not sure I really trust God to look after me. I need to look after myself. I need to keep proving myself. I'm here because God approved of me today. I'm not sure he'll approve of me tomorrow. And so because of that, it's almost like I I need to make sure that I've looked after myself. I'm holding on to a scrap or two 
just in case God is not able to meet his end of the bargain and to be the parent that he's promised to be. And you know, unfortunately, we've forgotten who we are. And like that street kid, we are holding on to scraps. Unfortunately, we've forgotten that we're meant to be kings and queens in God's house. That this is what kingdom business is about. We don't have to prove ourselves to God. As soon as I've given my life to him, um, the Bible says I have the right to become the child of God. Doesn't matter what my past was. God gives me full rights to be his child. You know, think about it. Being the child of a king is not a favor. Uh, <laughs> Prince William has never entertained a thought in his life. Where will I get money to pay rent the next month? His wife, Kate, has never ever thought, will we have, where, how will we afford clothes for our kids tomorrow? Why is that? It's not because they're such bright and smart entrepreneurs. It's because they were born the children, or he was born the child of a king. He's an heir to the throne of England. And so because of that, the whole might of that empire is there to ensure that the, 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 their king in waiting is looked after, he's provided for. And he doesn't focus his thoughts on thinking about rent for next month. He focuses on doing the work of the kingdom, doing the work of a prince, never worrying about tomorrow. Does this remind you kind of like Jesus' words? He says, don't worry about tomorrow. Look at the birds of the air, they are provided for. He says, seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness. All these things will be added unto you. That's Mark, uh, Ma Ma Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. And this is what God wants us to do as we go about the kingdom. This is the source of my confidence as I go about as a kingdom entrepreneur. I know who I am. I know whose I am. I know who has sent me to this business, to this sector. And I'm representing him. I'm his ambassador. And he will look after my interests as I do that. And that's, that's what Jesus came to remind us of. You see, Jesus came to remind us of who we are. That when we confess our sins, when we confess our rebellion, when we accept his call to follow him, no matter where we came from, no matter who we were, we become heirs to his throne. That we are restored to our original status as sons and daughters of the king. That we become enjoined in his mission to extend his rule over every sector of society. And this is the nature of kingdom business. That's what God has called you to, my brother, my sister. Living in authority. What's the key? What's the key to authority? I'm just going to conclude with this. And it's one word. Surrender. Surrender. Salvation is not a one-time event. It's an invitation to a lifetime of surrender to God's rule. God is calling me to let go, to turn over everything to him, to not be like that deprived child, <laughs> trying to hold on to my own scraps. He doesn't want me to be, he wants me to let go of my junk. And here's what I've come to see, that the level of my surrender will determine the level of my greatness. The more I surrender, the lower I go in surrender, the higher I go in the greatness, in my greatness, in my ability to carry out God's business, my ability to represent him. When money stops being the thing that I'm, fear, I'm serving, that I'm afraid of, the Bible says all these things will be added unto me as I'm seeking first God's agenda in my business. Uh, there's a famous evangelist known as D Dwight Moody who said, the world has yet to see what God can do with a man or woman who is fully committed to him. I want to be that man. I want to be that person who lived without fear. I want to be that person who represented God as my priority. I want to be that person who changed whatever sector God put me into, whether it's a church, whether it's whatever business. I want to be that person who represents God's agenda, who brings the kingdom of God on earth so that it's done on earth as it is in heaven. I want to be that person. That's who God is calling every one of us to be. Now, we've been looking at the, the what of a kingdom business. The rest of this month, we want to continue with this series. We're going to be, we're still talking about the nature of a kingdom business. So I think if we get our mind, if we can just adjust our thinking, the Bible says transform by the renewing of our, of our minds. My goodness, we'll be able to understand God's will for our business and we'll operate very differently from anybody. By the way, nobody can compete with you when you're walking in God's purpose. Nobody. Because God, your divine ideas, even if they steal your ideas, other ideas are coming. You know, the source, the one who gave it to me, no one can, can outgive. It doesn't matter what you take from me because you'll never be me. So this is the thing. Once we understand the nature of kingdom business, we'll be able to run these businesses completely different. So I wanna, we're going to be talking about the why, the who, the how uh, of kingdom business. But I want to conclude in prayer. Uh, and as I conclude, by the way, just a reminder again, join our WhatsApp community if you haven't done so already. Just click on the link below this broadcast and we'd love to just walk this journey with you. But I want to pray for two groups of people. The first group of people are people who God is calling you to surrender your business to him. 
Uh, right now you've been holding on to it. It's a scrap. <laughs> You're not understanding. This is actually, it's, it's actually my gateway to purpose. I need to release it to the purpose giver so he can show me why he put me in this business. I can't run business taking shortcuts. I can't run business like other people in the world. I can't be doing corrupt things on Sunday so I can, on, or during the week so I can bring my tithe on Sunday and think I can, I can, I can sort of money launder through church my tithes and offerings so that God can approve me. That's not the way of kingdom business. I need to, even the way my business runs, has to be aligned to God's values. So today, there's somebody I, I sense God is saying, surrender that business and allow me to be the CEO of that business and take strategy from me. Run it my way. There's somebody else who's watching this who's never surrendered your life to Jesus. And I'd like to pray for you as well. So if you just join me in prayer. Father, thank you so much for every single person watching this broadcast. I thank you because, Lord, you're teaching us the nature of kingdom business, how to think like you, how to run business like you. And I thank you, the Lord, there are people who are watching this right now who are so convicted. There's somebody who's never given their life to you. And right now they're praying and saying, I would like, I understand why I have to surrender. I will never achieve my purpose until I know the purpose giver. And if this is you, just pray this prayer after, after me. Dear Jesus, I come to you right now. I surrender my life to you. From this day forward, I choose to follow you. I will no longer do it my way. Forgive my sins. Come into my life and make me brand new. I choose to follow you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you've prayed that prayer, come on. Shoot me a line. Uh, send me a comment. Would love to join our WhatsApp community and just shoot me a WhatsApp on that. And we would love to. I'll, I'll send you some materials to help you walk this journey. I also want to pray for everybody here who's surrendering their business to the King. They're saying, Lord, forgive me for running it as my business. It's actually your business. I choose from today. I surrender it to the King. And Lord, from this day forward, this is your business. Come and give me divine strategy. Give me divine connections. Show me the purpose for my business. And I want to follow you and to run this business in a way that honors you and a way that represents the kingdom of heaven. And so receive this business now, Lord, in Jesus' name. Father God, I pray for everyone watching this show. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 5 says, Know the importance of the season you're in and a wise son you will be. But a waste, but what a waste when an incompetent son sleeps through his day of opportunity. I pray that, Lord, the men and women watching this broadcast, we will all be men, sons and daughters, wise ones, who know this day of opportunity, who know the importance of this season, that we will seize the day, we will seize this opportunity, that Lord, none of us would walk in ignorance and foolishness, that every one of us would walk in a way of anointing. Wherever we step, the kingdom of God will advance just like when Jesus was here on earth because you allow us to walk in that way. So I speak a blessing over your children, over your people, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hey, God bless you. Have a lovely, lovely week and hope to see you next week as we talk about the nature of kingdom business.